This is the Crowd Crux Crowdfunding Podcast with With Sal Sal Brigman, Brigman. where we cover everything you need to know to To launch launch a successful successful crowdfunding campaign. campaign. We speak with proven entrepreneurs who've raised money from the crowd and want to teach you how to do the same. Stay tuned because we're about to reveal how to launch your dream project with your host, Sal Brigman. Before we get started with this podcast episode, I want to take a second to introduce you to my friends at FulfillRight. If you need help shipping out your Kickstarter or Indiegogo perks or rewards, FulfillRight is the absolute best company for you. I've been working with them for a while and I can vouch for their services. They make it dead simple and take all of the headache out of shipping out all of those boxes, all of those orders to your backers and your customers. If you want to check them out, go to fulfillright.com at F-U-L-F-I-L-L-R-I-T-E.com. What up, crowdfunders? Salvador Brigman here. Welcome back to the Crowdfunding Demystified podcast. Man, I have a killer episode for you guys today. Um, I interviewed a mega Kickstarter veteran. Like these guys, this as a company, they've launched eight different campaigns on Kickstarter, many of them which of which have raised millions of dollars. So the Everyday Backpack Tote and Sling, an example here, they raised 6.5 million from more than 26,000 backers. They also did the Everyday Messenger, raised $4.8 million. And also their, their most recent campaign, I think you're going to like a lot. Um, this project has already you know, surpassed the, the $2 million mark. They're almost at $3 million and more than 7,000 backers for the travel line. Versatile travel, backpack, and packing tools. This is really neat. And I think we, we're very lucky to be able to talk with the head of marketing with this company. And to be able to hear the behind the scenes of what's going on in order to actually cause these financial raises and and also the advice that he has for you if you're just getting started now and and to a certain degree you want to sort of copy the things that are working for them um you can learn a little bit about that today on the episode as well as hear the story behind this and this is what i always say is that literally a, a small decision in your life can make a radical difference so these guys they decided to start this company now it has over 30 employees in san francisco but it was all based off of this really small decision way back when in 2011 and to, to be able to hear about that and how the story has unfolded is just so freaking inspirational the fact that nowadays literally as we're talking right now campaigns are being funded with crowdfunding entrepreneurs are building businesses as we speak this is literally the best time to be alive in my opinion for starting a business for growing what you're doing um, for getting your product out there into the hands of hundreds if not thousands of people out there all around the world so it's incredible it's really inspirational And I think you're going to like today's episode. If you want to surround yourself with, you know, positivity um, and also quality education and the right resources that are good for you, for your campaign, for your business. One of the things that I do every single week is I send out a weekly newsletter called Killer Crowdfunding Tips. And on this newsletter, I link you to some of my best content that I'm putting out there, some of my, my new YouTube videos, some of the new training content and material that I have, some of the blog posts, the podcasts, like all the new stuff that I have for you that's free, I share on this weekly crowdfunding newsletter. And in addition, I let you know a little bit about some of the stuff that's happening in my life. Like if I went to LA, I recently was on a vacation there. I just share some of the stuff that's going on in my life. And in addition, I also make new announcements. So like I'm doing a new crowdfunding class or something like that, I'll share that with that newsletter. So if you're interested in getting crowdfunding tips weekly from me, you can go to the link that I'm about to mention. This link is is crowdcrux.com slash subscribe. That is C-R-O-W-D-C-R-U-X dot com slash subscribe. Crowdcrux.com slash subscribe. Go there, enter your email address, um, and I'll start sending you my weekly crowdfunding newsletter. And I also invite, um, if you want to, you can reply to any of those emails that I send, and I'll do my best to answer them. Without further ado, let's get into today's podcast episode. 
Hey guys, welcome back to the Crowdfunding Demystified podcast. I have here with me today an extremely accomplished uh, entrepreneur. I would say this is a a mega successful Kickstarter veteran. You know, done multiple campaigns, millions of dollars. Um, you might know them from the Everyday back- Backpack has raised over six point five million. Um, they've also done the Messenger, the Everyday Messenger, for over four million dollars on Kickstarter. And um, they've also just now launched an entirely new project, which I'm going to let um, Adam tell you a little bit about, the Travel Line. So these are versatile travel backpack and packing tools. And at the time I'm recording this, they're just shy of, of $3 million with this project. So it's a really exciting, really looking forward to talking with you. Um, welcome to the show, Adam. Thanks for that uh, very, very kind intro, Sal. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me on. Dude, you've been like knocking it out of the park with these, with these campaigns. It's been, um, we've been really lucky over the years to um, have a really, really fantastic uh, base of Kickstarter backers. Um, and uh, yeah, crowdfunding has, has been good to us. Uh, everything that we've learned from our previous campaigns, we're able to apply it to the next one. And so it's kind of, uh, there's definitely been a snowball effect over the years. I mean, the products are also just beautiful. Like even watching your video for your most recent campaign, that is incredible how you film that with the beach scene. Looks like some drone footage there. Just like gave me chills watching that, honestly. Awesome. Well, uh, Peter, our CEO who filmed that is going to be real stoked uh, to, to hear that. But uh, yeah, we, uh, we definitely put a lot of time and effort into uh, the videos. We have an in-house videographer now. Mm. Um, but more so than anything, I mean, it really starts with the products. Uh, totally. Art, yeah. art and designer art is just an absolute world-class designer. The amount of thought he puts into uh, him and, and obviously our entire design team put into every single detail of every single product um, is, you know, that's insane. Old. I imagine. Yeah. Starts. Um, so what's, what's been your role like with these, with these different campaigns? What's been your role specifically? So I'm the head of marketing for Peak Design. Um, and, uh, in, when it comes to our Kickstarter campaigns, uh, I sort of, I, I oversee the messaging, the production, um, and then ultimately kind of the execution of, of that campaign and, and, um, and, and there's obviously, you know, it's a ton of, of, there's a lot that goes into it. Um, and, you know, a bulk of the work is, is done. I mean, really, it's an all hands on deck. kind of thing. Mm. Everybody on the marketing team, from our art director to our videographer to our, uh, we've got a guy who, who manages our digital marketing, uh, as well as, you know, really the, the customer service team. The design team, everybody is is sort of all hands on deck. A lot of moving pieces. Yeah, I imagine. Um, how long have you been with the company since the the very beginning, the first campaign? Or yeah, I um, so our founder Peter Deering is a college buddy of mine. We used to bartend together at the University of Wisconsin Madison. No way. Uh, yeah, and uh, back in two thousand eleven. He, uh, I, he had been working on his, this new idea for a product that, that ultimately we can capture a camera clip. It's a little clip that allows you to carry a camera on a backpack strap or a belt, or, um, you keep gone traveling and realize that DSLRs are a real pain in the ass to carry around. So he had this idea. He found this new website called Kickstarter and a few days before he launched, he called me up and I was between jobs traveling and and uh, he asked me if I could kind of help him out with uh, some marketing stuff. Um, and uh, that, uh, that was our very first campaign back in 2011. Uh, it, at the time, that was actually the second biggest Kickstarter campaign of all time. I think we did 365K in that one. Um, but that was like the beginning of peak design right there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, since then, we have launched seven other Kickstarter campaigns. Uh, so the current one, the, the travel line, is our eighth. And uh, we're now a 36-person company based out of San Francisco, California. So when you, when you were way back then in the early days, what did you think when that first one was fun? It was like you guys were just like jumping up and down. I mean, like you're a bunch of college buddies, and you're making an amazing product, and you're also getting renowned for it. 
Yeah, I, you know, the uh, Kickstarter was really just becoming a thing back then, and um, Peter had had put, you know, a ton of time and money and effort into bringing this capture camera clip product to fruition, uh, and then it kind of became time to, to launch it, to bring it to market, and, and I think he realized, like, huh, how, how the hell am I going to do this? Yeah. Uh, and, and it was at that time that, you know, some friends were like, hey, have you checked out this Kickstarter site? Uh, and, you know, he took one look and was like, this looks perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, I, and and it was, it was. It was great to us. It's kind of wild that, like, that simple decision to launch a project in 2011 has led to now the creation of a company that's helped, you know, thousands of people. Like, you, your everyday backpack at over 26,000 backers. Like, that's insane. Th that little decision has literally changed the trajectory of your life, I think. Um, Absolutely. Uh, I mean, from between zero and where Peak Design is now, there's certainly been a ton of hard work. There's been a ton of good decision making and hiring the right people. But there's also been some really uh, key moments of just luck, you know, and, and in 2011, uh, our timing was right. We had we found out about Kickstarter at the right time. Uh, we had a great product, and when we brought it to Kickstarter, it, it just happened that like the kind of people that were on Kickstarter, early adopters, uh, technologically savvy people, also overlapped with the market of people who might own a DSLR camera and might be interested in that kind of gadgetry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so you know our sweet spot was was on kickstarter and i think it, it, it kind of still is all the way till now you know i think a lot of times when we're launching a new business we focus a lot on the product because that's what we're most proud of but what you just said right there getting to know your customers and getting to know the people that you're making a product for it seems like is even more important in a sense yeah i mean the we there's many reasons why we uh continue to use crowdfunding as the, the platform on which we, you know, grow our business. Um, and, and a big part of that is the relationship that we're able to have with our Kickstarter backers. It's, it, you know, the platform enables a relationship that's much deeper than uh, most, you know, bag companies would have with the people that are buying their bags. Yeah, yeah. Let me ask you a dumb question here. <laughs> so, um if you are actually trying to like get to know your customers or your potential customers, I guess, or your backers, like you've created this idea, you, you know, maybe you experienced the problem a bit. How do you advise people to get to know their customer base better? Should they just like be out there in the comments? Like how, how could, could you get to know that target audience of yours? Uh, I, I mean, I, I don't think that's a dumb question, but I, I do think the answer is, is, is pretty simple. It's, it's engage them. You know, uh, it is it's it is in, you know, it, if we're talking Kickstarter specifically, it's get on that comment board, answer every single question. When people ask you a question about the product, like do the whatever the five whys. why, why would you want it to do that? Why do you need this? You know, like talk, talk to them, engage them, um, write updates and comment on their comments, have Kickstarter live broadcasts, uh, get to know the questions that they're asking. Uh, and, and I'd say on top of that also surveys have been a, an immensely valuable tool to us just to kind of understand where, uh, people's heads are at about all sorts of different things. We launch, we try to launch a big customer survey every year to all of our customers. Um, but I think our, our backers on Kickstarter are, uh, exponentially more, likely to take the time to really fill out that survey um mm -hmm. and and you know we've asked questions i mean we've our last survey was like 20 minutes long and we had over 10,000 responses to a deep 20 minute long survey we asked questions about like what people thought about peak designs political leanings and we asked people what you know out of this list of 20 products what should we make next uh, and you know, the, 
if you engage people as as a peer and just say, hey, tell me what you think, uh, they'll they'll tell you. Ten thousand. Why so few, man? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? um, so when it comes to the, like those questions, what do you think that people should make sure that they ask? Um, individuals or I guess potential customers about their product? Like do you usually ask like, where would you use this? Do you ask like, have you tried other products out there? Like what are the types of questions to get inside a customer's mind? Uh, I think those depend on um, sort of where in the customer journey you are approaching somebody with, with that question. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, right now, when people back our campaigns, we everybody who backs our campaign, we send them like a five or six question survey, um, and and it's like, how did you hear about us? Uh, you know, did you back this on a mobile device or not? Um, did you, you you know like what do you like the most about the travel line? Have you know having not actually you know used it? If there's one thing we can change, what would it be? And, um, you know, so asking just like off the cuff uh, impressions can can be helpful, you know, in a, in a campaign where we've got 60 days and we've got time to kind of maybe uh, do some product tweaks and updates based on like, well, it sounds like a lot of people really want a security zipper on here. Maybe we yeah. should have it in. Mm -hmm. um, Whereas if you're asking somebody uh, who has already purchased one of your products and used it for some time, um, I think it's going to be more about like, would you recommend this product to somebody else? Yes or no? Why or yeah. why not? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Um, one of the other things that I was noticing just from looking through your campaign, I think the functionality is profound. Like um, your new backpack, you know, weatherproof has all of these different like internal flaps and stuff like that. All these different pockets. It's really efficient. Um, you know, it's carry on approved. So there's a lot of great functionality. But at the same time, I don't really think that's what causes things to stand out. And that might be my, my own opinion. But I've I've tended to notice that storytelling and brands with really good storytelling just capture my own attention like a heck of a lot more than someone who's just like promising lots of cool functionality. What do you think about that? Um, I, I definitely agree with it in part. Uh, on Kickstarter is an incredible storytelling platform. The Kickstarter page design is just optimized around telling a great story. And, and I do think that a big part of uh, being successful on, on Kickstarter is, is telling a story that resonates with the people who you're trying to reach. Um, however, I, I will say that, you know, sometimes we certainly in the past realized like, ooh, I think we've taken the storytelling too far. Mm -hmm. Example, if, an example would be like for the everyday backpack tote and sling campaign the first like minute of that video originally was us talking about peak design and our ethos and our kickstarter heritage and stuff like that yeah. uh mm -hmm. and we actually ended up taking like just chopping off that entire first minute and going right to the products mm -hmm. uh and and so to a certain extent you know you you have uh, a long uh, attention span of, of somebody that's looking at your page, but you don't have a linguist attention span. Uh, and at the end of the day, at least in the kind of design category, people back a Kickstarter project because they are stoked on the thing that you designed. Well said, uh, well said. And yeah. It's almost like you said, like you can take it too far. At the end of the day, you can't forget that this is about the person. It's about the benefits that you're offering. It's about the promises that you're making with your product. And people, while they maybe care a little bit about, you know, your story and such, at the end of the day, they care about themselves. You know, they want to know, like, what is this going to do for me? At the um, end of the day, people are, are pre-ordering a product. Yeah, um, yeah. So always our, our chief goal when we're thinking about our video and our page is like, how can we as, as, as effectively and like succinctly as possible get somebody to understand what makes this product great and, you know, 
how they could use it in the long term. I had to interrupt this podcast episode because I want to introduce you to my friends at The Gadget Flow. Their product discovery platform reaches 22 million people per month. They've helped more than 5,000 crowdfunding campaigns thus far, and they have a social media following of more than 700,000 followers. If you want to gain access to their marketplace and list your own product, you can go to thegadgetflow.com slash submit and list your project today. Do you have any thoughts on, you know, you're throwing out the word like storytelling here, and I am too. And I think that for a beginner, they might not really understand like what that means. Like you think storytelling, you think like movies or like novels and stuff. Um, What do you mean by that? Like telling a story and to get people interested in your brand? That's a great question. In my opinion, storytelling is has become this uh, just another marketing buzzword. Really. Yeah, totally. It's, it's it is uh, what we say today instead of like just the word messaging, you know, which is a very classic marketing concept. The message, like, and and to me, those two things are are synonymous. So when people are talking about storytelling. Really, what what they're saying is, uh, you know, you you want to uh, effectively message your product or your idea to your target market, the people that you believe are likely to back your campaign. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you know, for us, that is uh, about starting with like the top level benefits of what, how can this thing help you. Um, and how will this thing improve your life? Uh, and then relating that to the actual features of the product. Mm. Uh, what a, yeah. What, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there, but just to quickly add to that, like when I was looking at your campaign, one of the things that I took away was you also show the product in like in a lot of different environments, and you show people like traveling. It's almost like you're on the journey watching people use this in different scenarios and such. Yeah, uh, we. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the visually, we want to uh, just kind of help people internalize like how they could help people imagine how they could use this product in the various scenarios where it really improves their, their life. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like, you know, it's kind of a weird way to think about it, but it's like you're showing someone what their life is kind of like. Like if you're into filmmaking, you're going around, you're taking photos, you're taking film for your YouTube channel or whatever, you know, and and this is kind of like an accessory. This is something that you can have with you while you're on your own journey, you know? Absolutely. Um, At the same time, we try not to take that too far. Uh, For example, with the Travel Line video, originally – you know, the, 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 the travel backpack that we have right now is designed to meet a very, very broad range of travel use cases. I mean, the whole design directive behind it is that no two trips are the same. So you may be traveling to visit family, you may be going to a weekend wedding, you may be going to a three-month backpacking tour of Southeast Asia, and, and the idea is that this bag works for all those scenarios. Uh, and originally, when we were storyboarding our video, we're like, "Oh, we're going to go to, we're going to go to Mexico City and do a shoot there. We're going to go to Vietnam and do a shoot there, and then we're going to, you know, take the Caltrain down to, you know, here." And 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 as we got closer to producing our video, we're like, "Shit, we don't have time to do all this stuff," <laughs> you know. And and that so does we sound were like, fun, though. <laughs> just like, let's just go around San Francisco and like ride the train and walk through the airport. And don't so, know. The, um, I guess the, the point I was making is that like, you don't have to kind of show every single scenario and environment and use case to help somebody grasp, uh, the, what, what you want them to understand about your product. Yeah. Uh, and, and for, for us, again, it really boils down to the product itself, uh, and, and showing off the, the features and really helping somebody almost feel like they've actually touched and handled and used the product before they actually have. Mm -hmm. 
Very well said. Before we talk a little bit about the, you know, the actual product, I just want to ask you, you know, your time on Kickstarter, um, having marketed a bunch of these different campaigns, are there any like secrets, if you will, or any things that um, you could share with the audience that you think they should, they can do to either rank better or, um, you know, get more traffic or anything like that? Any things you've like revelations you've had or insights you've had? There, um, well, well, first off, I, we've written kind of, we get that question a ton, um, and we've written a series of articles on our site. If you go to the Explore tab of PeteDesign.com, there's a thing that says Kickstarter 101, mm-hmm. um, and where we've kind of laid some of this stuff out in more detail. Um, certainly, there are some tricks that we've learned over the years. I'd say one one really important one to think about is that um, the Kickstarter is this huge platform, right? But at the end of the day, only I think like 13 or 14 million people have ever actually backed a campaign. Um, and when you are trying to advertise for your Kickstarter project, uh, the the people that have already backed the Kickstarter project are, that's really your target. You know, so if you're making, again, you're making a travel backpack, the people that you're trying to reach are, yes, certainly anybody who travels a lot, but specifically the people that travel a lot who understand Kickstarter. Um, yeah. and, mm-hmm. and the reason is that if, if you never backed a Kickstarter project and you click an ad to come to a Kickstarter page, it actually is a kind of a jarring experience. It's not a, it, it is, it's not a typical e-commerce transaction. Um, and so it, it kind of stifles people. Mm. Uh, and, and so, yeah, that, that, that's kind of like an, an important thing to, to keep in mind is that not everybody in the world knows what Kickstarter is or when they land on a Kickstarter page, what the hat is going on. Jumping off from that, do you think then nowadays – to be able to hit a big raise like yours, you almost have to invest in one of these like Facebook advertising companies um, that maybe have a list of people you can create a lookalike audience or at least target those those backers. What are your thoughts on that? I don't know if you have to. Um, it is certainly it certainly helps, um, and we have done it for our past three or four campaigns. We uh, the the agency that we work up work with is called Jell. Mm-hmm. Um, and we've been really happy working with them and, and certainly recommend them to others. Um, but even, even the, even the guys at gel will tell you, you know, some campaigns it works great for and others it's, it's hard for that type of advertising to move the needle. Mm-hmm. Uh, and actually that's kind of why we like working with them because I've, I've referred friends to them before and they've said, they've kind of basically come back and been like, I don't actually think we can help your specific type of, Project, uh, yeah. Um, well, what are so, those guys doing? What's that? What What is the team at Jellup doing for you, or like, how do they help? So Jellup manages uh, just about all of the paid digital uh, advertising placements that we use, and their secret sauce is that they are really good at targeting people. Uh, that are sort of within the Kickstarter sphere already. Mm. Uh, most of those ads are on Facebook. Some of those ads are on Google and other places. Um, but their secret sauce is in the in the target, getting those ads in front of the right people. Okay. Uh, yes, yeah. nice. and I think most marketing services for uh, crowdfunding campaigns, you know, that is the chief benefit that they offer you yeah i know funded today is like the other i think big one in the space aside from jellup um so there are a lot of these these companies um that will help you with those types of things and also other other assets you know putting together your project you have obviously agencies and such um out there yeah um we have a um we we actually have a full-time pr partner that we work with throughout the year um, so that's a, definitely an important marketing lever for our campaigns. When we are, I'd say another key piece of advice if you're launching, if you're making something, is uh, 
try and uh, make some extra ones off, out of the gate uh, and so that you have something to share with media or potentially influencers. Good idea, uh, yeah. You know, if you want to get articles written about your travel backpack, it really helps to be able to send that editor a travel backpack uh, for them to tinker around. Well said, well said. I'm speaking to the crowd funders in the audience who have already launched a Kickstarter campaign or have actually even successfully run a campaign. And the reason is, I think you will understand this pain point most. And that is, when you finally do raise money on Kickstarter or Indiegogo, the hardest part is not collecting the cash. The hardest part is shipping out all of those perks and rewards to your backers. It is a nightmare, my friends. It's a lot of spreadsheets, it's a lot of headache, and it's a lot of stress. That's why I recommend BackerKit. If you have not heard of BackerKit, they help you collect surveys, they help you collect data, and the entire fulfillment process is just so much easier and so many less spreadsheets when you use their software. You can check them out at backerkit.com and use CrowdCrux for a special discount. So I just have like one or two more questions for you. But um, before I do, I did want to ask you, you, know, you personally, having worked um, with, you know, a buddy of yours in college, you guys, I guess, were, were both bartending. You know, you, you start out, you stumble on this idea. You're helping him with the marketing. It just sort of blows up. Now you have a company, more than 30 employees, San Francisco. Everything's going really well, exciting new products. What's been the most, like, rewarding part of the experience for you, like the rewarding part of your job? The, I mean, the most rewarding part of, of my job, and I think it is – the same as the most rewarding part of working for Pete Design in general is that we, because we are crowdfunded, uh, we have been able to run and grow and sustain a company that has been free of outside investment. So we've never had to take venture capital or equity investment. Uh, and because of that, we're, we've never been beholden to any other interests other than our own um, and, you know, and our backers and customers. Um, and, and so it's, it's, the, it's kind of the, the, the freedom that that offers us to make every decision and ultimately run our business exactly the way we want to. Um, and, and do so in a way where, at the end of the day, the priority is to, you know, make ourselves happy and, and live, you know, joyful lives. Mm -hmm. uh, and, um, yeah, it, it, and the idea that we were able to kind of create that from nothing is, uh, is a really cool idea. That's insane. <laughs> that's, 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 I mean, it's, it's one of those stories that's like, um, I think maybe 10, 15, 20 years ago, this would not be possible. You know, you need to take on outside capital, but like now you can actually go directly to the crowd. You can tell your story with video online, like all this kind of cool stuff. Um, I think we just live on a, in a really great time personally. But, um, the, the other question I had for you here was, I, I know that looking at your campaigns, um, really successful, like millions of dollars in, in product sales, it almost seems like kind of unattainable. You know, like it almost seems like you guys are like these rock star entrepreneurs. But I know from personal experience and also just watching the iteration of your campaigns, you've had many iterations, I'm sure, with your products. Can you talk a little bit about that and also just share with the listeners like how this isn't just like perfectly come out? You know, obviously you're always working and continuing and improving on these. Yeah, I mean, the the campaigns that we run now are based on, I mean, this is our eighth campaign. We've done this seven times before, um, and and it's always a home game. And even when we launch a campaign, there is a, you know, we've already redesigned and rejiggered our Kickstarter page probably three or four times since we launched 30 days ago. Um, so there's, there's a constant process of honing. And that's, I mean, that's just on the marketing side, on the, on the product side, our first, uh, travel backpack prototype was 
sewn up probably about a year ago. Um, you know, the we we have products that we've been working on for a year and a half uh, that probably that won't launch until 2019. Um, and you know, it, it's the uh, at every level of the, of the business is uh, constant iteration um, and always kind of knowing that you know sometimes you know that you could do better, but you just got to say, "All right, this is good enough. We're going to launch with this. We're going to improve it." Mm. Well said. Well said. Well, where can people go and like learn more about this campaign, which at the time we're recording this is is live. Um, it looks like you have 27 days to go with the travel line. Maybe quickly you could just tell us like, um, number one, who is this for? How is it different? And where can they go and check it out? Totally. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so the, the Peak Design Travel Line, uh, in a nutshell, is a 45-liter carry-on travel backpack, uh, and a set of packing accessories, we call them packing tools, uh, that are all designed around this notion that no two trips are the same. Um, and the, these bags are for uh, a very, very wide range of travelers, whether you're, you know, uh, a backpacker dirt bag or whether you're a, you know, professional business traveler, um, whether you're a creative that's carrying around a bunch of professional photo video gear. Um, it, it's designed for a wide range of travel and the, the packing tools themselves are sort of modular and interchangeable, allowing you to kind of instantly customize your setup based on what you need to bring and how long you're going. Tell me about these like packing cubes. Like how does that work in? Yeah, so we've got, um, we have packing cubes for, uh, we've got packing cubes and pouches. Um, the packing cubes are, we've got uh, a set of compressible packing cubes for, for clothes. So you can put your clothes in there, you can zip it down, and it'll actually kind of compress them. It also has clean and dirty clothes, clothes separation. Uh, that's super convenient. Then that's we awesome. Cubes. Yeah, it's I actually just took the a full set of gear through uh, Mongolia for two weeks, where with like sans shower, mm -hmm. and uh, I got to tell you, the dirty clothes separation was lifesaver. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just I was on a trip to LA for like eight days, and naturally your clothes get more dirty. And I was just being like really like janky ghetto. I just had like a trash bag like separating my clothes and my like nice suitcase, but like. Yeah, yeah, it'd be nice to have something like that built in, you know? Well, hey, the trash bag works. Uh, <laughs> there's no doubt about that. Um, but but the, the packing cubes definitely uh, add, some, add some convenience and some other functionality to that. Definitely, uh, yeah. The, the camera cubes are come in three sizes and essentially allow you to use this bag to tote around your creative gear. Um, Peak Design has very much has roots uh, in the in the photography, videography world for the first four years of our company. All we made were camera accessories. Mm -hmm. uh, since then, we've branched out into everyday bags and now travel bags, but there's still a big core part of our customer base who are, you know, professional or semi-professional creatives, or, I mean, quite honestly, most people have a digital camera or most people if they're going on a you know the trip of a lifetime the idea of buying a, a, a mirrorless camera to capture that trip is um you know yeah pretty yeah big. so one of the, um, also just to add like here, one of the things in my own life I've been noticing is when I was younger, I always thought like organization was really boring, quite honestly. <laughs> and I just always was like, oh, man, I hate organization. Like I just throw my clothes or like stuff it in my suitcase. But what I realized is that organization actually saves you a lot of time because I would always be like hunting around my room or hunting around my suitcase, trying to find different things. Like, where did I put that? And just actually ended up me wasting more and more time. When you have something like camera cubes or like a tech pouch or even just like for your, your washing, you know, your, your toothpaste, your toothbrush, like all that kind of stuff, 
um, having that level of organization, it makes you so much more efficient and you're not like just like rooting around your, your suitcase for all these different things. I certainly agree with that. Um, but I will say that, you know, to what organization means to, to you or I is, is probably different and, and, and it's different for everybody. Um, and everybody kind of, one thing I think we learned through the, uh, through the testing process and as we did focus groups on this project is that like everybody, people already have a system in their head of how they like to do things. And so rather than design a kit that prescribes a system, we try to design a, a, a kit that sort of lets people enhance the system that they already have. Very cool. Very cool. So where can people go um, to check out and learn more about the travel line? And also to look at your video, which is quite not like really dope. Like it's just well drone footage. Like the the way you guys filmed it is really cool. Where can they go and check it out? Uh, you can go to Kickstarter and search Peak Design Travel Line, or you can just go to peakdesign.com slash ks, and that will take you right there. Awesome. Well. Adam, thank you so much for coming on the show, um, spending a little bit of time with us, sharing all of this great value, the lessons learned, hearing about your story. It's been awesome. Um, and if you're doing another campaign, we have to have you back. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for having me, Sal. I really appreciate it. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Crowdfunding Demystified Podcast. Again, my name is Salvador Brigman. Really appreciate you joining me here today. And today's episode not only was inspirational, not only was a pretty cool story, but I also think that some of the advice that was shared can really help you if you're right now gearing up to the launch of a Kickstarter, Indiegogo, crowdfunding campaign. Um, just, just realizing that these things, these strategies, these mindsets and approaches have actually worked to raise millions of dollars with crowdfunding. And I'm not in any way, um, you know, overhyping this. Like you can go on Peak Design's actual page and you can see the eight different campaigns that they've raised money with successfully. Many of them are over millions of dollars. Like uh, it sounds crazy, but it's true. You know, looking at their most recent campaign, the Travel Line, which I urge you to check out, um, this is almost already at three million dollars 2.9 million from more than seven thousand backers so these mindsets these approaches to business these techniques are proven to work so if you implement them they can also help you in your journey as an entrepreneur as a business owner as a creative type I urge you guys, uh, if you haven't yet, go and check out some of the other episodes that I have out there on this podcast. Um, I would love it if you could take a second to subscribe to this if you're on your smartphone and also leave a rating and review on iTunes so that other people know that this show is worth your time. I've also cataloged a lot of these lessons. You know, if you don't want to just go through and listen to these different shows and sort of, you know, bite size, put these together. I've also cataloged a lot of these lessons in the Kickstarter launch formula. And Kickstarter Launch Formula is a book that I've written that goes through step by step how to launch an effective Kickstarter campaign that raises money. It doesn't matter what category you're in, you could be raising money for a film, a theater project, could be for a design project, a technology project, it really doesn't matter. It could even be a game or a tabletop game. I share with you a proven strategy for smashing your goal, for raising far more than you're, you actually expect it with your fundraising goal, and also for doing this with a bang. You know, making sure that this is not just a, a small crowdfunding campaign. This is really the start of a whole new journey for you and for your life. And it's, I know it sounds like it sounds kind of, I guess, cheesy or like a little bit weird, but um, I, I sincerely believe that this could be a decision that radically changes the trajectory of your life. And it's very rare where we get those types of like windows off of opportunities where you can go from having a nine to five job doing one thing to then starting a company that has a tabletop game focus or starting a car game or starting a, a new design product and making that your full time online store. I think it's really rare in life that we have these types of opportunities available to us, but now we do. And I don't know how long, you know, just being honest here, I don't know how long crowdfunding is going to be around. I don't know how long uh, Kickstarter is going to be around, but what I do know is that you can still, at this very point in time, you can still raise money on this site, you can still command attention, and you can still build a business from scratch. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode. Again, my name is Sal, and I'll see you next time.